Hello and welcome back. I am so excited to be sitting down and filming this video because it's on a topic that was actually recommended to me by one of you guys. Today we'll be talking about Agrafort. Let's get started. Agrafort is a huge fortress built of red sandstone that can be found in the city of Agra, which is located in India. It is located only about a mile and a half from another famous structure in the area, the Taj Mahal. Construction on the fort as it is originally began in 1565 and was commissioned by Mughal Emperor Akbar. It is believed to have been built on the raised site of the fort of Budulgar. That fort had been the stronghold of the Lodi Sultans from 1451 until 1526 and it was ruined in the years leading up to the success of Akbar in battle. It took around 3,000 to 4,000 workers eight years of non-stop work to complete the original fort. It is estimated to have cost 60 million rupee or around 827,000 US dollars in today's standards. The fort structures as we know them came about when Emperor Akbar's grandson, Shah Jahan, had a very different style than his grandfather. Instead of red sandstone, Shah Jahan preferred beautiful and grand structures built of white marble and many additional structures in that style were built within the fort. You may be familiar with another structure of his design in that style, the Taj Mahal. So let's talk about the layout of the fort and some of the different buildings held within. It was a maze of different buildings and structures spanning around 94 acres of land. The fort is semi-circular in design and is surrounded by a 70 foot high fortification wall. There were originally four gates with one being on each of the four sides, but later on, two of those four gates were walled up. Today, only one of those are used to enter and exit the fort. Akbar's court historian, Abul Fazl, recorded that there existed 5,000 different buildings, including several mosques and palaces within the fort, although most of these no longer exist. Some of those 5,000 buildings were actually demolished by Shah Jahan, so he could replace them with his preferred style. Unfortunately, a further number of structures were later demolished by the British to make way for barracks. Some of the structures that do still remain are Jahangir's Palace, the Pearl Mosque, the Hall of Private Audience, the Hall of Public Audience, the Octagonal Tower, and the Palace of Mirrors. As the name suggests, Jahangir's Palace was the personal palace built by Akbar for his son, Jahangir, and it is the largest residence in the complex and is one of the earliest surviving buildings. From what I understand, after he lived there, it went on to become the palace for women of the royal household. The Pearl Mosque is one of the few mosques that were built of white marble by Shah Jahan during his time. It's said that this one in particular was used for members of the royal court and that it shone like a pearl, hence the name. The Hall of Private Audience was used to welcome more distinguished visitors while the Hall of Public Audience was used as a place for the Emperor to listen to the concerns of the public or to meet with less distinguished officials. The Octagonal Tower was the residence of Shah Jahan's favorite Empress, Mumtaz Mahal. I can't imagine that pictures alone do it justice because it is absolutely beautiful with all of the details that were put into its design like marble and all of the intricately carved designs. It was also built in a way so that the breeze from the Yamuna River could flow through. It also provided the best view of the nearby Taj Mahal. Agra Fort, like many forts, castles, and strongholds, is strategically located. This made it a prime target for rulers wanting to seize the throne. As I mentioned earlier, the area was previously under occupation of the Lodi dynasty. This was until 1526 when Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Pinipat. In a typical boss fashion, he claimed the fort and the palace as his own, and there he would reside. While there were some modifications, nothing major happened at this point. After Babur came his successor, Humayun, who was also coronated and would reside at the fort. As I just said, this fort was a hot ticket item among rulers, and in 1540, Shur Shah Suri of the Shur dynasty decided he wanted in on it. He went on to defeat Humayun and take over the fort, again making only minor modifications. Humayun bided his time for 15 long years until he was finally able to recapture the fort. Unfortunately, he ended up holding it for only about a year 
until it was taken by the final emperor of the Sur dynasty, Adil Shah Suri. It was taken by his general and commander, Himu, who promptly crowned himself king. Once again, this would not last. Less than a month into his newfound kingship, Akbar, son of Humayun of the Mughals Empire, who we just talked about earlier, popped in and he took the crown right from him. At this time, the fort was still built with just bricks and was nothing like it is today. Akbar knew he needed to shore up his defenses unless he wanted to continue playing hot potato with the fort. This is when he underwent major renovations to rebuild the fort in the red sandstone that we know it for. The next round of major modifications came with Shah Jahan, as we talked about earlier. He knocked down buildings to make way for his grand buildings of white marble. He was so important to designing and building not just the Taj Mahal and the buildings within the Agra fort, but he also actually moved his capital to Delhi and modeled the Delhi fort on Agra fort. Interestingly, Shah Jahan would end up being imprisoned at Agra fort by his own son and successor. He would be here from 1658 until his death in 1666, where it's said he died gazing up at his beloved Taj Mahal. The fort would continue to be fought over despite all of the effort made with its defenses. Throughout the years, it saw several more owners, including several from the Maratha dynasty. At one point between 1761 and 1785, it was briefly taken over by Ahmad Shah Durrani of the Durrani Empire until it again was regained by the Marathas. The Marathas held it until it fell to the British during the Second Anglo-Maratha War. The British held on to it until it was finally handed over to the Indian government when India won their freedom from the British in 1947. The Red Fort was made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. You're able to visit the fort today. Prior to the pandemic, they were receiving around 3 million visitors per year. While there, you're able to walk the 94 acre spread and see the remaining two dozen or so buildings from the Mughal dynasty. I would love to visit here and the Taj Mahal one day. I read one review that you should definitely visit Agra Fort and then go to the nearby Taj Mahal as this one is kind of considered a prequel for the things to come for the Taj Mahal in terms of its design. I do find it interesting that despite being so close in proximity to each other, only about a mile and a half, the Taj Mahal gets around seven to eight million tours per year compared to the only two to three million tours per year here. If I'm there, I'm definitely visiting both. That one and a half miles will not stop me. If you've ever visited, feel free to leave your experience below. It's so fun hearing people's real life experiences of the places I learn about and talk about. Thank you for joining me today to discuss Agra Fort and a bit about the history and design of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.